Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art, and I'm going to read more of our book written by uh, Arthur Tamplin and John Goffman in 1970. And we are on page 125, Lip Service to the Public Health, that's chapter 5, and guess what? There's only two and a half pages, so we'll finish up chapter 5 tonight. Yippee! Okay, so here we go. I'm going to take my glasses off. <clears throat> We're on the uh, second paragraph into this first subchapter that says the first step to reduce allowable radiation do dosage. Indeed, it baffles us to hear AEC and nuclear proponents outdoing each other with, quote, we, don't, we won't give people one-tenth of the allowable dose. We won't give people one-hundredth of the allowable dose. We won't give people one-ten-thousandth of the allowable dose, unquote. Marveluser and marveluser, we said outside the AEC. Alice in Wonderland world would say. What does that mean? Marveluser and marveluser, we would say. We outside the AEC, Alice in Wonderland world would say, I get it, okay. <sighs> Since you don't need to give people the radiation from AEC programs, then our proposal for safe standards is in no way a thwart to your super safe programs. Join us in achieving federal codification of safe standards for radiation standards. The resulting, quote, fume, sputter, splat, Unquote. Gracing the air at AEC headquarters in Germantown, Maryland, makes it quite clear that the AEC officials know very well that reducing the allowable radiation dosage will indeed interfere with their pet promotions. Hmm. Look back again at Professor Teller's remarks in this chapter. Faced with a total inability to present any scientific evidence to counter our leukemia and cancer estimates from radiation exposure, the final empty trick was attempted by AEC and its psychophants. Attack not the scientific findings, but attempt to destroy the character and propriety of those who make the scientific findings which disturb the promoter. Thus we soon, we soon heard we had presented our findings to the wrong scientific meeting. Why wrong? Because these were engineers who, were, who really were in no position to determine whether the results were believable. The alle this allegation was dumbfounding to us. The top electronic and electrical engineers decide to devote their entire to devote their annual scientific meeting to a serious discussion of the environmental impact of the nuclear science they conduct. And we are told these engineers are too stupid to be presented with evidence for their critical evaluation. We shall leave the engineers to muse over this. Congressman Craig Hosmer of California presented the same quote criticism unquote in a conference. Why, he asked, didn't we present the findings to our scientific peers for open review and criticism? Indeed, what we, why not? We had just done so before the electronic engineers and furthermore in our testimony before the Muskie Committee we had stated Today we have presented your committee with much evidence indicating that current radiation exposure guidelines are indeed dangerous, much too high. It would be naive of us to believe that our recommendations will be received with enthusiasm in all quarters. To the best of our ability, we have endeavored to present the truth. Our calculations, our evidence, may upon critical examination by others, prove wrong in minor respects. They will doubt, we doubt they will prove wrong in any major respect. The sharp cutting edge of scientific criticism, with all the evidence placed squarely in the open forum, 
will demonstrate any fallacies, will show where any additional evidence is needed, and where errors have been made. Critical examination by our peers was precisely what we wanted, expected, and pleaded for. What was this nonsense about no peers? Here we had presented a body of evidence where scientists in the world could review, criticize, recalculate, or do anything he wanted to agree or disagree with, our, with us. And who would prevent the scientist from making a public presentation of his findings? We couldn't see anything to stop criticism of our we couldn't see anything to stop criticism of our findings. We suspected and are certain now that the only reason for the peer story going on for months was simply a device to try to discredit damaging evidence without any counter evidence available. One of the oldest dodges in the world and so revealing. It seemed worthwhile to find out if the Atomic Energy Commission really had any concern about where or to whom we had presented our findings, or whether we were simply downright unhappy with the true facts concerning radiation hazards were now out in the open. I'm going to repeat that again. It seemed worthwhile to find out if the Atomic Energy Commission really had any concern about where or to whom we had presented our findings, or whether they were simply downright, downright unhappy that true facts concerning radiation hazards were now out in the open. We decided to test the presentation to peers concept once and for all. So at the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy Hearings, we asked for a complete hearing before truly capable peers, the best scientists in the land. We said we were willing to present our case to a jury of such peers. See our challenge in Chapter 2. And what did Henry Hosmer say in answer to our offer to have the best scientists, impartial and with no axe to grind, judge us and our findings concerning the serious hazards of federally allowable radiation doses? Congressman Hosmer answered, That sounds like the same method used to authenticate the Dead Sea Scrolls. Really? Indeed, Congressman Hosmer, you wanted peers. And when peers are offered, you're off to the Dead Sea Scrolls? How so? And the AEC, have they been heard from? Are they willing to debate before an impartial jury? No word. No word at all other than a call for our heads. We rather doubt this debate will ever be held. And if not, it won't be because of our reluctance. Wow. That's the end of uh, lip service to the public health. So I'll stop here. Well, you guys, uh, like I say, keep your courage feet on and make a decision that you're going to feel good and be happy. Uh, love the people around you. And um, I don't know. Keep improving your diet. How about that? That's what I'm doing. Makes me feel better, but it's not, I can tell the difference. I live on the West Coast, and I will tell you what, people here are sick, or they have the flu, or they just feel tired, and uh, the more we eat better and get healthier and get stronger, I think that we'll be able to learn how to manage what's going to happen, or what is happening to us. Well, I hope so. Anyways, I'm going to end here. Um, ciao, you guys. Bye.